Manufacturing and Mortality is an EPSRC funded research collaboration between seven UK universities where we're looking at developing synthetic and biohybrid self healing materials. Each university is bringing a different specialist expertise to the research, so we're a group of chemists, biologists, engineers, and designers all working together to explore the feasibility of producing, manufacturing, and designing with these kinds of materials. We're currently exploring some initial applications such as consumer products and specialist engineering applications, but we think there are many more potential uses that can be investigated. And we're working with several industry partners to uncover the real world problems that this technology can help to alleviate. But also, we're looking for new companies who might be interested in collaborating and exploring these ideas with us. A self healing material is a material with the ability to repair itself. The way we use materials is that we expect certain things from these materials. They have a certain functionality. It has some mechanical strength, it has some electrical conductivity, you can see through it, it is water dense or whatever. So the material has this functionality. Then a damage occurs. That can be any kind of damage. Mechanical damage or heat damage or electrical damage. And after that damage, the material doesn't work anymore. The functionality is either reduced or completely destroyed. When the material repairs itself, this limited functionality after the damage is restored, completely restored or partly restored. The material works again. So here is the important thing. A self-healing material repairs itself. It restores its functionality after a damage. There are currently two distinct ways that self-healing works, intrinsic and extrinsic. Inspired by natural systems, extrinsic self-healing materials introduce a healing agent to the damaged site, either through vascular networks or microcapsules. On the other hand, intrinsic self-healing materials do not have a sequestered healing agent, but possess a latent self-healing functionality that is triggered by damage or by an external stimulus. These materials rely on chain mobility and entanglement, reversible polymerizations, melting of thermoplastic phases, hydrogen bonding, or ionic interactions locally to initiate the self-healing. And while historically extrinsic is a more broadly researched area, Intrinsic is getting more and more interest at the moment, so it's an area where this project is really aiming to contribute. There are many different kinds of materials could self-heal. There are research papers and projects exploring self-healing plastic, ceramics, concrete, glass, and metals. However, the majority of these are still in testing and development stages. But there are some self-healing coatings that are currently commercially available, and we're expecting many different types of self-healing materials will be available in the future. We are currently conducting lab experiments and are trialing new combinations of biological and synthetic compositions to see where self-healing occurs. However, we are also adopting an approach which uses artificial intelligence to predict the performance of the material as well. Built upon our historical data, we can construct mathematical models that can forecast the healing efficiency of newly constructed prototype materials. While this, this method is not as voracious as a lab test, these predictions can help us to estimate which type of materials will be more likely to self-heal more efficiently, which can speed up the process of testing and development for researchers and developers. Several industrial sectors could benefit from self-healing technology, as many of the products that they develop can be broken or damaged. This project has several industrial partners, all of whom are interested in self-healing technology in one form or another. Our current research interests include the development of material for use in personal devices such as mobile phones, in energy devices such as batteries, and for use in the extreme environment where you really don't want to do repair unless you have to, such as nuclear, deep sea or the aerospace industry. There is lots of early stage research but very few products have been developed yet, which is why we have decided to engage with industry so we can integrate these products faster into the pipeline while ensuring they will still be applicable to real world situations. But what makes Manufacturing Immortality Project different to other research projects is that we are a truly multidisciplinary team looking at this disruptive technology from a material science, design engineering, and business model perspective. 
We're hoping that this holistic approach will enable us to propose more well-rounded, environmentally mindful material solutions. Yes, in a number of different ways. Essentially, it provides us with the opportunities to make products and components more durable and resilient. So it can help us to extend not only the physical, but also the psychological lifetime of products. Potentially combating the premature disposal that occurs because of, say, damage or wear and tear. But there could also be opportunities to explore these within performance-based models of product service systems. As these kinds of materials could provide longer-lasting quality assurance, reducing the need for servicing repair. But we're also approaching this project and the development of this new material with an active awareness of circularity. We plan to ask questions such as, will they be part of the biosphere or the technosphere? Can they be recycled? What are the opportunities and the issues at the end of life? Because we don't want to produce monstrous hybrid materials that can be separated, recycled or reused. Our aim is to develop a new material that can help us to create more durable, reliable products, but also take in consideration the environmental, social and economic implications of implementation.